For the start of this project, I've got some pieces cut out. And just to make it a bit quicker, I've done some basic drawing on them so you can see it's an elephant. Now I've already put one piece into the head of here. And what I'm going to do is use some sticky tape and to stick that on the back. There's a little tab and the tab needs to be stuck down. Do not obscure the little slots which are there. Make sure the tape is not over those. But I want to be able to keep that trunk in place and not have it go disappear on me. So that's the head. And here I've got a piece which I've cut so that we can make this into a three-dimensional elephant. Now this funny looking thing here, which is one leg and a bit of a knee, is the first one to go on. What you want to do is to put this through here. Now as you can see, it won't easily go, so there's a very easy way of doing this. Just bend the tabs back. Bend them to the outside, not the inside. If you bend them to the inside, you can't easily get at them to flick them back out again. But if you bend them to the outside, you can. So this makes the threading of this so much easier. And making sure you put it on the right way is always a good idea. Believe me, I've done this video several times today and I've managed to mess it up every single time. So, the video that is, not necessarily the elephant part of the video. Push it all the way through to the back and then put those tabs back up. The little tabs can stay down still, but the big tabs can go back up again. You use those and it's fine. Do the same with the opposite side. Now I've made the file for this with a fairly generous slot, so this is a fairly heavy card, so it should be fine. You shouldn't have any difficulty with it. So there we have one leg, and I know he looks very peculiar at the moment, he's going to start to look better. So next time we want to put on the main part of the body. And this time we only need to push the two smaller tabs in and hopefully this will go through relatively easily. Sometimes it makes sense to use a pair of tweezers just to hold the tabs flat and then you can get them through a bit easier. There we are. Oops. So now those tabs can be folded back out when they've been used. So on this side, I'm just going to squeeze it together with my tweezers until it's gone through the hole and pull the tabs out. So now you can see it's definitely looking a bit more elephant-like now. This is where these two tabs come in because this is going to go on top of the little arrows. So the arrows are going to go through here and when the arrows are through you can press this down flat one way or the other it doesn't make much difference which direction you're going at the moment but you want to press the arrows to the inside and you want to glue them down. You want to make sure they are well glued. Okay so you could use a strong double-sided adhesive if you have one, but if you don't have one that you trust, don't trust it. Because it's almost bound to come bite you when you're finished. So my elephant is pretty much finished, but we need to work out how to put it in the card. And I have worked out a relatively simple method for doing that. Okay, take number 122. Actually, not quite that bad, but it's starting to feel like it. So, I've got my elephant made, and that's easy enough, but I need to put him in the card, and that is what's been causing me so much difficulty. Nothing I've used has seemed to have stuck it down and kept it there, or it's been in the wrong place. And blah, 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 blah. Right. So I've now gone through all my other card bases and I've just got this one left, so it's got to work now. 
and I want to put him so that he's round about there. Now, make sure you make sure that mechanism is facing to the centre fold of the card. I have some hot glue, which I'm currently using because if nothing else is going to stick it, this certainly should. So, first things first, I'm going to put some glue on the back of here and get my elephant actually stuck to the card and it would help if he was up the right way. Okay, and I put him there. He's stuck there whether I like it or not now. As I don't think this is going to move anywhere near as easily as the other stuff did. Now I do want to make sure that I haven't got anything stuck down that I don't want to stick down. Yeah, he's free moving. In actual fact, I would be quite happy with that. But of course, once you've closed the card, it's not necessarily going to bounce back up. It might, but it might not. So we still need our strap and I've decided there's only one thing that's going to do this. I'm going to have to use hot glue to glue the strap to the back of his body and I need to do that with him in the position that he would be in if he was close. So basically he's not stood up like that, he's flat as he would normally be. So I'm going to put some hot glue on here. Not much of it is coming out of there, but enough, I should think. And okay, that's under his leg, and hopefully I'm not gluing anything else down. No, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to let that cool a little bit before I do anything else, because I don't want to muck up this time. I can't believe how many goes that I have had to do this. I really can't. It is somewhat amazing. Now, what I want to do is to mark off. Oh, ow! I just put my hot glue over my pencil. Oh dear. Right, so I want to. Mark this quite accurately. So I'm going to get my ruler in place. There we go, I'll bend the card, and then I know that is exactly where it is supposed to be. And I'm going to draw a faint line just there. That is the distance between the back and the first layer, pretty much. So that needs to be cut off. And in this piece will get bent, like so. But it's not going anywhere just at the moment. I need to put hot glue on here. I need to make sure it doesn't spirit out too far. There we go. And I'm just going to close the card on top of that. And let it cool down. And now I have it so that we'll wind these opened up he pops up. I have tried so many times with the step method of getting this to pop up and it just hasn't seemed to want to work. But this has finally worked really well. I really think he's quite cute considering this is just a, a mock-up version. I quite like him. I think I might be tempted to go in with my brushes and things and do a background for this one. And of course it means you can do whatever you want with the front because you've got no cuts in the front. You can put panels on or not as you wish. It doesn't make any difference. So I think that is probably the easiest way of getting it right. As I've tried all the other ways and it's 
Yeah, I just ended up in a mess. It's taken me hours to get this working properly. There we go. Right, now I'm going to go into shortcuts. So I'm going to show you how to manipulate clip art so you can make your own designs. So to make successful 3D pop-up cards, it's necessary to have an image which has a certain depth of feel to it naturally. Now I've picked up an image here from Pixabay. We've got loads of free images you can use because I wanted to show you how you can actually do this with some clip art or whatever that you pick up from any source that you want. Now I've gone for this caveman because he doesn't actually fit the traditional image that would be easy to do. But I wanted to let you know that it can still be done. You just need to give it a little extra thought. So my caveman was the original image, but when I tried it out, first of all, I made it so that his face was divided into two sections and the stones were behind him, but so was his, you know, the leg was at the back as well and it, it just didn't really work out. So what I decided to do was to alter it by bringing in a couple of boulders. Now I've exaggerated the shape of these to suit my purpose, this isn't the shape they came out. So the next thing that you need to do is to decide which areas you want to cut out for which part. So you want a back, a middle and a front. Now obviously my boulders are going to be the back so that's easy. I put it into my software, I traced it, and it's basically ready to go. The caveman is another matter altogether, not quite so easy to discern. But what I decided to do was, for my next layer, I was going to use the rock that he sat on. Now, because you have to have a certain amount of overlap for each layer, in order to use this tab to make it, I had to create a much larger piece of rock than you might expect. Then for the next piece I decided to have the caveman himself all cut out with his own wheel here and his knee and his foot and everything all in one piece. And then finally I decided to have a tabbed section which is actually going to be the wheel that he's cutting and it has a little tab that will slot into the previous layer. So once you've decided which bits your shapes are going to be, you have to line them up so that they can be put together by the tab. And that's why I've got these two slots here. And they will fit this tab here without too much difficulty. But you need to work out your positioning for your actual elements. So what I've done is I've put all my pieces over this drawing. You can't easily see them because of the drawing. Here we go. This is my image moving out of the way. So these are my shapes, which I simply put over the complete image and they overlap in this bit just here. Now, normally what I would do is I would take these put it in the middle there and then I'll go to effects and I would go for, what's it called? Uh, knockout, that's the one. But I happen to find out that it won't do the knockout on this and I think the reason is, is because these things are overlapping all over the place so it doesn't really know what it wants to do. So it didn't work very well. But there is a way around it. What you can do is you can take your piece that you want to knock out effectively and put it in the center where it needs to be. And then you go to edit, copy and paste in place and then object hide. So I've got a pasted one, but I can't actually see it. So now I'm going to take the piece, which is in fact the rocks. I'm going to group that, and now I'm gonna move it out of the way. And you can see that it has the slots cut into it. So now, if I go to show all, 
we can see that the copied one is just there. So I repeat the process. I go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place. It's very important to use paste in place and not somewhere else. And then object, hide, and select another one of these. Doesn't make any difference which one it is. And group it, and then you can move it out of the way. There we are. And now we go to show all, and that one can be grouped as well. There we go. So we have our pieces with the slots cut in. So all we have to do now is to take our original images and line them up on that. This was my standard image, so I really don't need that in there. And everything is as it's supposed to be. As far as I can tell, just checking this preview again. And one, two, three, and the flat bit. Yep, that looks to be fine. Okay, so I'm going to put these where I want them on my page to do a print and cut. In case you're wondering why this one is slightly different, the reason for that is that with some designs, you can actually have the tabs at the front and then you hide it by something. As in the elephant that I made the other day, the tabs were hidden. If you want to do one without tabs on the front, but you want to secure it, if you make these that shape instead so they're a little bit bigger, you can fold those over on the front and then stick the item directly onto it and then you'll still have your other layer. Right, I'm going to go and cut this lot out and then I'll show you how it looks when it goes together. Okay, second time lucky with any luck at all. So, push these to the outside. See, I've even got to do that to the inside. Whatever next. And push these tabs back. You notice I've gone for the other holder, so this should give a little more substance when I want to glue something on the front. But I've actually done a whole other load of cutouts because I figured there was much point in just cutting out one. I would probably end up jinxing it if I did that. So let's have take two, shall we? There we go. Those are in. And those are in. Like that. And the second row was the bit with the cornerstone on there. Oops, the detrius saddle there again. There we go. Right. Now the last one is going to be this one, but remember I've taken off the slits and that and I want to put this wheel into the slot that I made for it. So that can go in there. It's actually quite a quite a good fit that one. And it's a good idea to put a piece of sticky tape at the back 
just to make sure it stays there, although that one is quite a firm fit. It actually gives quite a nice result. So what I have here are the two other tabs. Remember I had the arrows that would normally be stuck through something and I definitely don't want that. So what I'm going to do is just give these a bit of a fold like so, but I'm going to fold them inwards. Now you can use double sided tape or you can use glue depending on what you feel happiest with, but you want something that's going to stay stuck. And because I'm doing this on the camera, I'm going to go for double sided tape because it's quicker. I don't have to wait for it to dry. And if you stick something solid underneath that you can press against, it makes it a lot easier to do this. There we go. So I need to line up. that with that I think and there we have our three dimensional caveman. <sighs> I am just relieved to have finished.